Do you know one? We have to get it for the money. We're gonna... We're gonna take up our action right now. Oh, 
Just the speaker of the hour. Um, I've known this woman of God for 20 years and 11 months. <laughs> um, she's a great mother. I I love her a lot. I appreciate her. I don't say it often, but um, she's my biggest fan and. She leads by example almost every single day. Um, she's nervous to come before you on the speak like always, but I don't, I don't know why she is so nervous all the time because she always brings the word. Um, I just want to let you know that I love you a lot. And I present to some and introduce to others none other than my own mother, Nadine. Dominion authority He reigns With power and majesty Dominion authority He reigns Over my circumstances Giving me another chance He reigns Over my circumstances you reign, you reign, you reign, 
Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He reigns. Amen. Hallelujah. He reigns in my life. Amen. I know I'm not who I used to be. I might not be where I'm supposed to be every single day. But I thank God that He reigns over my life. He reigns over my circumstances. He reigns over my faults. He reigns over my faults. He reigns over my good, bad, and ugly. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I thank God for this opportunity. I thank God for just Him being in my life, too. And I thank God for Jesus Christ who shed His blood on the cross even for me. Amen. Because without the blood, I don't know where I would be today. Amen. I just love Jesus. He's just everything to me. I don't always do what He say, but, you know, I thank God for His grace and mercy. Amen. Um, we're going to go right into the word this morning. Um, uh, our scripture is going to be coming from First Samuel, the 15th chapter. Um, it's verse, from verse 1 through verse 24. I know it's a lot of reading. I'm just asking if you guys can just please bear with me um, and just let the Lord have his way. Amen. Amen. Um, Okay, 1 Samuel, the 15th chapter, please, if you can stand, please stand in respect of God's word. Amen. Amen. Okay, and verse 1 reads, One day Samuel said to Saul, It was the Lord who told me to anoint you as king of his people Israel. Now listen to this message from the Lord. This is what the Lord of Heaven's armies has declared. I have decided to settle accounts with the nation of Amalek for opposing Israel when they came from Egypt. Now go and completely destroy the entire Amalekite nation, men, women, children, babies, cattle, sheep, goats, camels, and donkeys. So Saul mobilized his army at Telaim. There were 200,000 soldiers from Israel and 10,000 men from Judah. Then Saul said to his, then Saul and his army went to a town, went to a town of the Amalekite and lay in wait in the valley. Saul went his Saul sent this warning to the Kenites, move away from where the Amalekites live or you will die with them. For you showed kindness to all the people of Israel when they came up from Egypt. So the Canaanites packed up and left. Then Saul slaughtered the Amalekites from Havilah all the way to Shur, east of Egypt. He captured Agag, the Amalekite king, but completely destroyed everyone else. Saul and his men spared Agag's life and kept the best of the sheep and goats, the cattle, the fat calves, and the lambs, everything, in fact, that appealed to them. They destroyed only what was worthless or of poor quality. Then the, Lord, then the Lord said to Samuel, I am sorry I ever made Saul king, for he has, been, he has not been loyal to me and has refused to obey my command. Samuel was so deeply moved when he, when he heard this that he cried out to the Lord all night. Early the next morning, Samuel went to find Saul Someone told him Saul went to the town of Carmel to set up a monument to himself. Then he went on to Gilgal. When Samuel finally found him, Saul greeted him cheerfully. May the Lord bless you, he said. I have carried out the Lord's command. Then what is all this bleeding and wailing of goats and the lowing of cattle I hear? Samuel demanded. 
It's true that the army spared the best of the sheep, goats, and cattle, Saul admitted, but they are going to sacrifice them to the Lord your God. We have destroyed everything else. Then Samuel said to Saul, Stop. Listen to what the Lord told me last night. What did he tell you? Saul asked. Saul told him, Although you may think little of yourself, are you not the leader over the tribes of Israel? The Lord has anointed you king of Israel, and the Lord has sent you on a mission and told you, Go and completely destroy the sinners, the Amalekite, until they all are dead. Why haven't you obeyed the Lord? Why did you rush for the plunder and do what was evil in the Lord's sight? But I did obey the Lord, Saul insisted. I carried out the mission he gave me. I brought back King Agag, but I destroyed everyone else. Then my troops brought in the best of the sheep, goats, cattle, and plunder to sacrifice to the Lord, your God, in Gilgal. But Samuel, repri Samuel replied, What is more pleasing to the Lord, your burnt offering and sacrifices, or your obedience to his voice? Listen, obedience is better than sacrifice, and submission is better than offering to the fat of rams. Rebellion is, a sin rebellion is as sinful as witchcraft and stubbornness as bad as worshiping idols. So because you have rejected the command of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. Then Saul admitted to Samuel, Yes, I have sinned. I have disobeyed your instructions and the Lord's command, for I was afraid of the people and did what they demand. But now please forgive my sin and come back with me so that I may worship the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you once again for this opportunity, God. Lord, I ask that you have the Holy Spirit to arrest the atmosphere right now, God. Lord, I ask that you just come in, Lord Jesus, and you do what you do, God. Lord, right now, as I Speak your word, Lord. I ask that you just help me to step back, God, as you step forward and bring your word, God. Lord, I first had to look at myself with the importance of obedience, God. So, Lord, now I'm asking you to help me to make it plain for your people, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that someone will get something from this message today, God, and I ask that you use me according to your purpose, unto your will, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Okay. The title of um, the message this morning is The Importance of Obedience. Um, when I looked up the meaning of obedience, the meaning of obedience, um, very simple, it says, the state or quality of being obedient. Now we know that <coughs> We know that the opposite of obedient is disobedient. And the meaning of disobedient is neglecting or refusing to obey. Um, we know also that as, as a child of God, um, it is required of us to have faith and to believe in God. But another thing that is most important or just as important or essential is that we be obedient to God. Um, it's okay for me to come or for us to come to church and say, you know what, um, I believe in God or I hear I go to church and I listen to the preacher, I hear the pastor preach and, you know, the word was good. But 
it is so important that when you come in and you hear the word that you be obedient and apply the word to your life because if you if you don't apply the word to your life then there's a problem and um, in the book of James the fourth uh, chapter in the tenth verse it says that we should not only be a hearer of the word but we must be a doer of the word now um, one of the things that we have to understand is that application takes obedience because when the word is given to you if you're not obedient you will never apply that word to what to your life um, also in the book of Luke the 12th chapter verse 47 it says that um, basically the, the, the servant that know the right thing to do and don't do it the servant that knows his master's will and just refuse to do what the master say will be beaten with many stripes now as a child we know that children have to obey their parents as a student you have to obey your teacher as an employee you have to obey your boss and in the same token as a child of God we have to obey God's word now a lot of times you might witness to somebody you might tell them about the Lord and you know you might tell them what the scriptures say and you could tell them every good thing that there is about God and about salvation and about Christ and how he shed his blood on the cross and how much he loved them and how he died for them and everything but until that person recognize and understand to be obedient to what you're telling them they're not going to give their life to God now another thing is um, when 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 you when you give your life to God um, most of the time some of us are placed into leadership the Lord placed us as a leader over something in the church now I always see a pastor boom say um, if we don't come to Bible study he has to come because he has he, he have an obligation to God and to the responsibility that was placed on him to teach Bible study teach the word preach the word whatever it is that God has called him to do same thing goes for everybody else that is in the church if God has called you and placed you in authority over anything that he gives you to do so we have to understand that with the anointing comes power because when he calls you he anoint you with the anointing comes power with that power comes authority and with that authority you have to have obedience in order for you to carry out God's command and the will that he has for you to do now it's sad that sometimes when we when we come in and and and, and the Lord uh, uh, put us in authority and he give us these responsibility we feel like okay now I'm saved and you know I'm anointed and the Lord has given me this and given me that it's time for me to sit down but that's where we're wrong because like I say once you have that anointing and you have that obligation you have the responsibility where you must be obedient and do what God has called you to do now we go back to um, uh, the, the text for today where um, we see where Samuel had a conversation with Saul now sometimes when the Lord call us and we've been doing things for so long sometimes we can forget who we are and forgot and forget whose we are. Now, when uh, Saul approached, uh, when Samuel approached Saul, he reminded him in verse one. He says, um, "It was the Lord who told me to anoint you as king over uh, His people in Israel." Now, maybe there was an issue there already that uh, uh, Samuel had already seen, but he wanted to make sure that he reminded Saul that it was God, that everything that he had, everything, every position that he held, and every authority that he had, every anointing that he had, and the power that he had, he wanted to make sure that he reminded him that, listen, remember that this authority and everything that you have, it started with God. 
So he went ahead and he told him, he said, um, it was the Lord who, who told me to anoint you as king over his people uh, uh, in Israel. Now, he have, now I have a command, something that the Lord told me to tell you to do. Now, he told him that the Lord said, I want you to go over to uh, Amalek and I want you to completely destroy the entire Amalekite nation. Now, if you look at when, I mean, for me, I know most of the time when God tells me to do something, even though most of the time, sometimes I'll be very honest with you, I'm not going to stay up here and tell anybody that I am so obedient to God. Because if I was to say that, I think the Lord would probably strike me right where I'm at, and, and, and I don't want that. So, And I'm, I think I'm a pretty, I, I try my best to be as honest as I can, especially when it comes to God's Word. And if, so, if I see something in the Word and I know that I have an issue in that area, I'm the first one to admit that I have a, an issue in that area. Now, I'm going to admit that I don't always do what God say to do. I don't always do it. Sometimes I have a problem doing some things that God asked me to do. Like right now, by me being up here. Most of the time, or all the time, Pastor will always tell me, you know, you need to cut this grumbling and stuff when God asks you to do something. But I prefer to just sit right in my seat and hear somebody else versus myself. But um, back to the, the subject is that, when God gives us instructions, most of the time he gives us specific instructions. Now, um, here in, in this particular uh, uh, story, God gave Samuel specific instructions to give to Saul. Now, it told, the, the, the command was for him to go to Amalek and completely destroy the entire Amalekite nation. And he even went to another extent, and he even go into detail and tell him every single thing that he needs to destroy. He said, I want you to destroy men, women, children, babies, cattle, sheep, goats, camels, and donkeys. Now, is there any way you can read that and miss something? If you read that, that is that is is simple. It's hard, but it's simple instructions for you to tell him to go and to kill everything, wipe out the nation completely. I mean, he gave him specific instructions on exactly what he needed to do. And like I say, it's a hard thing, but it's what God said to do. Simple instructions, simple directions that we need to follow. Now, just like that. The Ten Commandments is something that we know that is given to us, and they're simple. They're, they're directions that are they're plain and they're direct. Now, I don't know of any one of us in here that can, that can stand up and say, I can honestly say that I keep every single commandment. No. So here it is now that Saul got up and he said, okay, I'm going to go and do what the Lord has told me to do. But if you read down in verse 7, you can see where Saul was disobedient to what God told him to do. Now, Saul is a leader, and if he's a leader, he was supposed to, at the time, he was the king. So you're not expecting for God to actually tell the king to do something, and he's going to just go and do what, what he wanted to do. But sometimes when God gives us instructions, from the time we receive the instruction to the process of the instruction and carrying out the instruction, something always goes wrong with us, because most of the time we start to veer off places and doing things that we're not supposed to do. So let's go to verse 7 and see what it says. It says, then Saul slaughtered, Saul slaughtered the Amalekite from Havilah all the way to Shur, east of Egypt. He captured Agag, the Amalekite king, but completely destroyed everyone else. Saul and his men spared Agag's life and kept the best of sheep and goat and cattle and the fat calves and the lambs everything in fact that appealed to them they destroyed only what was worthless or of poor worth now if you read verse 3 and then you go down to verse 7 you see where the disobedience come in because 
everything that God told him to do, he did the total opposite. He did not tell him to, to, spare, to capture the king. He did not tell him to spare the king life. He did not tell him to take cows, goat, lambs, anything that, he list, that was listed here. God told him to destroy everything. But he went ahead and he kept the things that he thought might have looked like, okay, we can use this for this, we can use that for that. But that's not what God told him to do. God told him to completely destroy the whole nation. So if God tells you to completely destroy, that means that you're not supposed to spare anything and anybody. So here it is now um, uh, in, in verse 10. Verse 7 through 9 is where we see where Saul disobeyed God, where his disobedience took place. And in verse 10, if you go down to verse 10, is when God went and he spoke to Samuel about what Saul did. So here it is now in verse 10, it says, Then the Lord said to Samuel, I am sorry that I ever made Saul king. Now, <laughs> when, I, when I read that, that hurt my heart. Because I put myself into Samuel's position when I'm disobedient and when I don't do what God tells me to do. He said, I am sorry that I ever made Saul king for he has not been loyal to me and has refused to obey my command. Have you ever refused to do what God has told you to do? I have. I'm humble enough to say that I have and the thing is is that God he don't let us go without knowing that he's disappointed in us he went and he told uh, uh, Samuel that he regret that he put Saul as king because Saul would not be loyal to him when God put you as a leader he expects for you to be loyal to him he expects for you to carry out every one of his command he has already equipped you when he appointed you to carry out his command so why is it that we're always so quick to go against what God say and do what we want to do so Samuel was so hurt behind what Saul did. It wasn't anything that Samuel did, but he was hurting for Saul because God told him, I am, I am so disappointed that I put Saul as king over my people because look, he can't even be loyal to me. And it's, it's funny, that's how we are. We can't be loyal for five seconds. So he went and he put the burden now on Samuel. He letting Samuel know exactly what's going on. So Samuel on the behalf of Saul, he went out and he was praying to the Lord all night for Samuel. That's just how sometimes we might be disobedient. We might do things that we know we're not supposed to do. God placed Pastor Boone over the people of liberty. And sometimes God might not come directly to you and tell you what you did, but he'll tell the pastor. And then Pastor Boone now have to go and intercede on your behalf. And now, does things have to go that way? No. But because we choose to be disobedient, because this is a choice that Samuel had. He had a uh, uh, Saul had, I'm sorry. Saul had a choice to go and do what God told him to do. But he went and did the opposite of what God told him to do. So now he's disobedient to God. Now God is saying that, you know what, I, am, I regret the day that I put this man that chose, purposely chose to do, not to do what I told him to do, and went ahead and do something else that I did not tell him to do. So now Pastor Boone got to be up all night praying for me because I'm out there doing things that I know that I'm not supposed to be doing. Now Samuel could have been praying for something else or somebody else. He got to be praying for somebody that is supposed to be an example. He got all these people that he's supposed to be ruling over. He's the king. And he cannot even carry out a command that God gave him to do. That's probably just the way sometimes Pastor Boone might say, my God, Nadine's supposed to be the praise. She's a part of the praise team. And here this Thursday night, she's not here. Let me go home and pray for this girl. And, 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 and I mean, this message really put a burden on me because it came to me first. So here it is now. 
Samuel went in prayer and he was calling out to the Lord all night because he felt the pain. I'm saying he felt the pain that God felt when he had to hand down that kind of uh, 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 judgment on Saul. But Saul caused it on himself. So he went ahead and he did whatever he wanted to do and he did not carry out God's command. So God said that he is sorry. He regret the day that he ever put him as king over his people. When God put you in authority, he expects for you to do what he say. He expect that of you, just like I know how, the way I raise my daughter, I expect my daughters to live as respectful women. I don't expect for my daughters to go out there and act any kind of way. My, my, my son, he's my son, and I know how I raise him. Now, I know that a woman in the house can only take a, a, a male child so far, but I know that I have taught my son enough where I know that I don't expect certain things from my son. I don't expect for him to run around with this one and that one. I don't expect for him to be out there getting all these girls pregnant. I expect for him to be responsible. I expect for him to be a man. I expect for him to get a job. I expect for him if he's going to be with somebody, if you don't want to marry the person, don't be with him. Because you're wasting your time and you're wasting her time. Next thing a baby get caught in the middle and who's going to suffer? I don't expect for my son to do those things. Because I did not raise my son that way. Now I'm sure that before Saul got to this point, he was already taught. He was already taught the right way and to do what God tell him to do. Because if he had not proven himself or done something to, to, to indicate that, listen God, I can do this, he would not have put him to be king in the first place. So now, I ex just like I expect certain things from my children, God expects certain things from me. My daughter lives in California. I have another one living in Georgia. I don't expect for her to be out there drinking this morning. I expect for her to be in church. Amen. I expect for her to be in the house of God this morning because that's what she was taught. Now, the same way how Samuel, I mean Saul, he was already groomed into being obedient to God. So where is the breakdown? There's a breakdown somewhere. There's a breakdown somewhere. But sometimes when we have been with God for so long, we become lax in doing certain things. We, 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 we just feel like, okay, I've been with the Lord for 10 years now, so I ain't got to do the same things that I used to do. Yes, you do. And I myself can attest to that. Sometimes I don't read like I should. I hate to read. I don't like to read. I'm being honest. I don't like to read. Sometimes I got mail stacked up this high because I don't want to read that mail. I don't want to read it. I don't want to pick it up. I just put it, Hey, let me call the lights people find out when the light's going to be cut off. And I'll pay the bill then. I'm being honest. I don't like to read. It's just something that I don't like to do. But being a child of God, I have to read. Because if I didn't read 1 Samuel the 15th chapter, I wouldn't know what happened with Saul and Samuel and God told him, I don't want you to be king no more. I wouldn't know that. And I wouldn't be able to apply that to my life or to use that to examine myself to see am I being obedient to God the way that I should be. Amen. So now uh, uh, Samuel had to go and he had to break the news to Saul to let him know, listen, God ain't pleased with what you did. Because when you make a mistake... Sometimes we don't want to acknowledge that mistake. Sometimes we keep going, 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 going like everything is alright and everything is not alright. But if you, even if you're not praying every day, even if you're not reading your Bible every day, when you are out of God's will, the Holy Spirit will let you know. And when the Holy Spirit lets you know, you got to do something about it. So, down in the next verse now, you can see where Saul thought he did everything right. He thought he had it going on. He going downtown setting up a celebration for himself. Because he thought, I don't carry out God's will. So here it is now in verse 13 when uh, uh, Sa Samuel confronts him. It says, when Samuel finally found him, Saul greeted him cheerfully. May the Lord bless you, he said. I have carried out the Lord's will. What's wrong with that picture? <laughs> he know he didn't carry out God's will. But, you know, we so formal with everything. It's the formality. 
of things. The way we just get into, well, how you doing, sister? Praise the Lord. I'm just doing fine this morning. No, you're not. You've been crying all night. <laughs> no, you're not. You've been crying all night. You're so burdened down. You drive down the street crying every day. You, you, you all messed up. Say you messed up. If you messed up, say you messed up. Oh, oh, bless the Lord, uh, 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 Brother Samuel. I have carried out the will of the Lord, and I am doing just fine this morning because I know the Lord is pleased. No, he is not pleased with you because you disobeyed what he said. So here it is now where Samuel has to go and, and let him know that the Lord knew exactly what he did. He said, may the Lord bless you. He said, I have carried out the Lord's command. Then what is all that bleeding of sheep and goats and the, and the lowing of cattle I hear? Samuel went straight to the problem. Don't dance around it. Don't, don't sugarcoat it. Tell them. What's all this, this stuff I hear going on right here? I hear them goats. I hear about the sheep. I heard about all the stuff you brought back. He didn't tell him, well, listen. I think maybe later on today we need to have a conversation because thus said, no, what's all this you done did? Get straight to the point. Because sometimes when you sugarcoat things too much, the person can miss the seriousness of what you have done to God's kingdom. I don't want nobody sugarcoat nothing to me. When Sister Boone come to me, she tell me just like it is. Nadine, you have done this. I don't say nothing because I know she'd be right. She could tell you, I don't say nothing when Fern come to me because I know Pastor Boone call her the Lord's forerunner. I call her the Lord Samuel. I think she is the Samuel in this church. I mean, how many can agree? Because Fern will come to you and she don't care what you think. She gonna tell you what the Lord says. So Sam, Samuel went and he went straight to it. He said, "What's all this I hear you going on? You brought back from over there where the Lord told you not to bring nothing. He told you to destroy everything." And he sit up here. He say, um, uh, uh, in verse in verse fifteen, he says, "It's true that the army spared the best of the sheep, goat, and cattle." Saul admitted. So now he's gonna admit it. And then here now it says. Listen to what he says. He says, but I'm going to sacrifice them to the Lord, your God. Now it's all Samuel's God. It ain't his God no more. It's Samuel's God. So he brought back the things that God told him to destroy, to go ahead and make a sacrifice to God. What's wrong with that picture? There's a problem with that. For if he tell you to destroy it, it means that he don't want you to use it as no sacrifice. It's not supposed to be used as a sacrifice. It is to be destroyed. So if he tell you to destroy everything, why would you bring back something that the Lord does not want to sacrifice to him? If he wanted it, he would have told you, listen, kill all the people and bring the animals. We're going to use it for service of sacrificing. But he didn't. He told you to destroy everything. But he went ahead and he brought back what he wanted to bring back. Isn't it amazing how the things that God think and say that is no good, we think is so good? We, we always think that if God said, okay, I know you want that Mercedes, and I know it looked good, but that's not the car for you. Go get a Toyota. Oh, no, 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 but I want it. You ain't got Mercedes money. If you're going to get a Mercedes, you got to be able to have money to maintain a Mercedes. And if he know you ain't got it, he going to tell you, look, right now, you can't handle it, so you don't need that right now. Let it go. And we still want to help up with that Mercedes, and then when we don't have it no more now, we say, but Lord, why you let them take my car? You should have been obedient from the beginning. So anyway, he went and he said to him, um, I brought the stuff back because I want to use that for a sacrifice for your God. Then Samuel said to him, stop. Sometimes we need to stop for a minute. Stop and think about what you're saying. Do you hear yourself? Do you hear what you're saying? You're saying to me that you're going to use what God told you to destroy. To use as a sacrifice to, to him after he told you to destroy it. So he said to him, stop for a minute. Listen. And then he asked him, he said, what did he tell you? What did the Lord tell you? Now this is your time to think and to evaluate what you have already messed up. So he said to him, he says, 
um, and Samuel told him, although you may think little of yourself, are you not the leader? Are you not the leader over the, over the tribe of Israel? The Lord has anointed you king of Israel and the Lord has sent you on a mission and the Lord has told you go and completely destroy the sinners of the Amalekite until they are all dead why haven't you obeyed the Lord why did you rush to the plunder and do what was evil in the sight of the Lord look he didn't say nothing about the people he said, you, God gave that command to you. That was something that he told him to do. It is personal now. God didn't say you and the people. He said you. He gave you that command. If God tell me to do something and I take Didi along with me and something happen, it's not her fault. It's my fault. Because that responsibility was put on me. God gave me the responsibility. So now here it is. He said, but I did obey the Lord. Saul insisted. Hello? He just told you to stop for a minute. He told you to stop. He asked you, did God not tell you? Are you not the king? Are you not the leader? Are you not the example? Are you not the one that was supposed to be doing what's right? Now you're still insisting that, oh no, but I did do what he told me to do. No, you did not. That's why we're having this conversation. It's amazing how sometimes when we do wrong and somebody try to tell us we're wrong, we miss the whole picture. I, I've done it so many times, Sister Bo said, oh my God, Nadine, that's not what I'm saying to you. And I'm sitting there saying, but that's what I'm hearing. And she said, no, that's not what I'm saying. But sometimes we so, we so focused on what I did. And, 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 and I, I thought I did right, but you didn't, I'm telling you, you didn't do right. So now I'm giving you the opportunity for you to get it right. So he told him, he said, but I did do what the Lord said. He insisted. I carry out the mission he gave me. I brought back King Agag. He didn't tell you to bring Agag back, but I destroyed everyone else. He didn't tell you to spare the king's life. He didn't tell him to do that. He told him to destroy everything. And then he said, then my troops brought in the best sheep, goats, cattle, and plunder to sacrifice to the Lord, your God, in Gilgag. Now he putting the blame on the people. Now he putting the blame on the people. If, if, if God placed me over something and something go wrong in that department, don't look at the people. Look at the head. Because if the head right, then the rest of the body going to act right. That's why a lot of times, sometimes, you know, Pastor Bo might do certain things and he might say certain things. And sometimes you might not agree with what he say. That ain't your problem. Do what he say. Because he is the head of the church. I'm the head of my household. And sometimes I, I, I listen to certain things my kids say because sometimes they're right. Sometimes I could be wrong, even though I'm the parent. I'll ask them certain things, opinions on certain things. And sometimes, believe it or not, they tell me the right thing. And sometimes I got to check myself. But in this particular situation, Saul was the one that had authority to do what God told him to do. He was the one that was in control, and he gave his authority to the people that was under him he took what they brought to him after God told him destroy everything even if the stuff looked good even if it looked like something that we could use God said destroy it and that's what he means for you to destroy it when God give you instruction he doesn't need your opinion to add to his instruction he is a God that is more wise than you could ever be he is a God that knows everything before you even can think it so how is it now that I'm so smart that I'm going to disregard what he say and put what I think and what I feel over a God that is all knowing there's a problem with that there's a problem with that issue sometimes we don't want to we, we don't want to obey everything that the whole scripture say. We say, you always hear people say, resist the devil and he will flee from you. But at the beginning of that scripture, it says, submit to God. Submit to God. If you never submit to God, you will never be able to resist the devil. I don't care what you say. I don't care who you are. I don't care how strong you think you might be. 
If you never submit to God, you will never be able to resist the devil and he will never flee from you. Saul did not submit to God. He did not submit to the command. He did not do what God say. So then because he didn't submit, then there was consequences for his disobedience. And because of that disobedience, it cost him everything he had. Everything he had. When you give your authority to people under you, they will disrespect you in every way possible. When we take what God has given us, the anointing, when we take the authority he gives us, and we hand it down and be disobedient, we say, devil, I want you to have me today. Amen. That's not God's will for us. He anoints you. He has appointed you. He has given you every tool that you need to go and do what he asked you to do. Amen. Not for you to give your authority to the next person. That is not God's will. So when you do that, you are disobedient and disobedience brings consequences. Amen. It does. Disobedience will cause you and God to separate. Because when you're disobedient, you already feel like, oh my God, my prayers, they're not even getting through. Because you know that you ain't doing what God say for you to do. You're not walking in his will. You're not doing what he said. You're not being obedient. You're not carrying out his will. So that calls you to not partake in what God has for you because of your disobedience. And then now, you got to go back and you got to start back from square one. You got to start running that lap all over again. Because you done stopped and mess up God's flow. I tell you, when the Lord put this thing to me, I was like, oh my God, I sat in my bed. I cried for days behind disobedience. And I, I mean, I, I can put myself in Saul's position. Because I've done that. And I, sometimes I'm, I'm so ashamed, I don't even want to come in the door. Ain't, no, ain't, ain't nobody got to know what's going on, but I know God knows what's going on. I don't want to teach Sunday school. I don't want to do praise team. I don't want to be up here. I don't want to do nothing. I just want y'all to leave me alone when I get in that, in that mode. Because I know that I've been disobedient to God. Then I got to go back and I got to repent. And I got to say, Lord, help me. Lord, forgive me. But I thank God for the blood. Back then, Jesus wasn't there yet. So Saul was dealing with God directly. I believe that back then, it was tougher. Back then. Because you ain't had that grace. That grace wasn't there. Now, I don't sit up here and take advantage of God's grace. And sit up here and say, you know what, I'm just going to do this right here because I know God's going to forgive me. No, 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 no. You don't do it like that. But if you fall into something, sometimes I don't always fall. Sometimes I just go and I just walk. And I got to go back and I, I'm, I'm, I'm just being honest. Sometimes we just go and just do things that we know we're not supposed to do. Just like Saul did. He knew he wasn't supposed to spare nothing. He knew he wasn't supposed to bring nothing back. But he did it anyway. And there was consequences behind that. He lost everything. Now, I wish we all could sit up here and say, oh, you know, I'm just like Job. My problems and my situations is because I am so fearful of God. And, you know, God, I, 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 Lord, I fear you so much. I'm not going to do, I don't do nothing wrong. That's not so. Not so with us. Because we gravitate to the things that is not pleasing to God. We gravitate to those things. But... The first thing we got to understand sometimes is in order for you to be obedient, you have to humble yourself. Once you humble yourself, then you'll be able to submit. Once you submit, then you can be obedient. Because if you never humble yourself, you will never submit. And if you never submit, you will never be obedient. All three of those things work together. They work together. And there's no excuse for us not to be obedient to God. None whatsoever. Now, we have a lot of excuses because I got a lot of them. My first one is, Lord, I'm tired. My first excuse, I am tired. 
That's my first excuse. I come home and I see the bed and it's over. Don't let me see the bed. Just let me stay in the sofa because once I lay down, I'm telling y'all that's it. I'm gone for the night. And I don't care if it's 6 o'clock. It could be 6 o'clock. I go to bed at 6. Yes, I do. I go to bed early. I'm an early person. I go, once I see the bed, if it's Bible study night, I got to fight to get out the house. And, and it's the truth. Don't let the AC be on. The AC be on. That's it. I, I lay down. The AC on. I guess I'm to eat. That's it. I'm, I'm tired. I'm not going. But I'm, I'm asking the Lord to help me because I know that I have a responsibility. I have things that I need that I'm supposed to be doing for God. If I don't come out and get Bible study, how am I going to witness to somebody? I already say I don't like to read. I might as well come and listen if I don't want to read so I can go and tell somebody what I heard the night before. But we have to be able to humble ourselves. Sometimes we don't want to humble ourselves. We don't want to submit. We don't like that S word. Sometimes we don't want to submit to the boss. But if you don't submit to that boss, you ain't going to have no job. Amen. You're not going to have a job if you don't. And I know if my kids don't submit to me, they're not going to have no place to live. I don't care. They could be 20. I don't care if you're 20 years old. You better listen to what I say as you can't stay in my house. That's it. So the same thing applies with God. When you know that, 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 that you are in authority, you know you have something that God has told you to do, you got to be obedient and do it. Obedience is better than sacrifice. That's the next thing that Saul, uh, 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 Samuel said to him. He said to him, he said, um, verse 22. But Samuel replied, what is more pleasing to the Lord? Your burnt offering and sacrifices or your obedience to his voice? Listen. He asks him the question, and sometimes you ask somebody a question, they look at you like you're crazy. So when they look at you crazy, you just got to spit it out for them. You got to just tell them just like it is. Because people play stupid. I tell my daughter all the time, I tell her something, she stand up there, give me that blank stare. I'm like, Didi, I know what you're thinking. I already know, so let me just spell it out for you. So Samuel told him, he said, listen, obedience is better than sacrifice. Sometimes you just got to make it plain for people because people act like they ain't got no sense sometimes when it comes to God's word. And submission is better than offering fat rams. Sometimes we think, okay, I'm going to live any kind of way, but I'm still going to pay God my tithes. He don't care nothing about your money if you don't do what he say. He don't care nothing about your money if you don't do what he say. He don't need your money anyway. And first of all, it is not your money. It's his money. <laughs> So it's, it's, it's better for you to be obedient and do what he say than for you to go every day. And you can offer a sacrifice every day. If you live in a foul life, that don't mean nothing to God. He want, to, he want you to open up to him so he can clean you up, fix you up, and you can be an example to him anywhere you go. Other than you sitting up here offering burnt offerings with something that he told you that he don't want. Come on now. So he told him, he said, listen, it's better for you to obey God than for you to sit up here and offer sacrifices every day. That don't make no sense. So then um, uh, he said to him, rebellion is as witchcraft. Who in here want to do witchcraft? Who in here doing witchcraft? I mean, that is that, that's self-explanatory. And st stubbornness as bad as worshiping idols. So because you have rejected the command of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. Can you imagine how he felt when he heard those words? As a king, I mean, you was all up here. Now you down there. And then the same people that you listen to, now you got to face them and they're not going to have no respect for you. Because you done lost your place. Not only you lost your place with God, but you, the people that you're supposed to be ruling over, they lost respect for you. Because you refused to do what the master told you to do. So now here in verse 24 it says, Then Saul admitted to Samuel, Yes, I have sinned. It took all that for him to admit. Sometimes that's how we play ring around the rosy with God. He says, Yes, I have sinned. I have disobeyed your instructions and the Lord's command. For I was afraid of the people. People ain't got nowhere to put you. People not the ones that, 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 that allow you to wake up in the morning. You could set my alarm clock, but if God don't wake me up, I'm not getting up. I 
to call everybody in the house. Set the clock. Make sure you get up. Make sure you turn on the TV. Make sure. But if God don't get you and me up, ain't nobody going to be doing nothing. So why am I going to sit and worry about what the people say? So this is what he did now. He let the people cause him to do what God said. He said, for I was afraid of the people. When God anointed you, he did not give you the spirit of fear. He did not give you the spirit of fear. He gave you authority. He gave you the anointing. He gave you the power to carry out his command in every single detail. If he told you to kill the goat, he know that you have a heart to kill a goat. If he tell you to go and kill all the people, wipe out the whole nation, he know that you have a heart. He placed that in you where you can go and kill all the people and you ain't going to worry about it because God say do it. So why is it that now you're going to say, oh, Lord, the Samuel, the people, it's not the people, it's you. Because you refused. You decided that you was going to be disobedient. You decided that you was going to go your own way. You decided to take what the people brought. Because even if the people brought that to him, he still had the choice. He had the free will to say, no, the Lord said destroy everything. But what he did, he went ahead and he settled he went and he went beneath what God told him to do so it says I was afraid of the people and did what they demand how are you going to let somebody demand you as the king to do something that God told you not to do you the king you should have killed him for coming bringing you that to tell you to take what God told you not to bring okay you bringing me that God say don't bring it that's it you dead hey come over here kill this guy cause God told me to destroy everything and he coming over here talking crazy you, you talking crazy can, can you imagine if I, if I come in here one Sunday morning and I say Pastor Boyle God said we should all come in here with bathing suits on he gonna look at me like what What's wrong with you? He's, uh, uh, Fern, take that girl in the back. It's just awesome. Go talk to Nadine in the back. I mean, he would probably start. He would go home and say, I don't know what's wrong with that sister. Y'all got to pray for her. But, I mean, he allowed the people to tell him what to do. And then he says, but, and then he's going to say, oh, but now, please forgive my sin and come back with me so that I may worship the Lord. Now he, now setting in now. He understand now what he did. He understand now that there's consequences. Now he's trying to beg for mercy. But it's so good that we serve a God that is forgiven. But in his case, he still had to deal with the consequences behind what he did. Even though you might do something, you might ask God to forgive you. You might ask God, okay, Lord, I need you to help me with this. And he will. And like she was saying in Sunday school this morning, it might not come right away. Sometimes it does come right away. Sometimes it doesn't. But you know that the consequences is going to come. But when it comes, you got to say to yourself, you know what? I did that. This ain't had nothing to do with God because he had already equipped me to do what he called me to do. But because I wouldn't humble myself and I wouldn't submit to God, I couldn't be obedient to do what he called me to do. So Saul had to now start evaluating himself. And then he said, you know what? I did do wrong. At least he admitted it. Because he could have kept going on and on and on and on and say, you know what? No, I didn't. No, I didn't. But at least he had enough sense to say, you know what? I did. And once he did that, I'm sure he went and he repent and repent and repent. But I read it in the, in the 16th chapter where God sent a spirit of torment and he couldn't even sleep at night. And so nowadays, I mean, for me, sometimes when I know I done did wrong, I can't even sleep at night. I'll be like, Lord, is that that tormenting spirit you sent to Saul? That's in here bothering me why I can't sleep. But God is a good God. He is so awesome. He is forgiven, but oh my God, he'll forgive you, but you gonna, there's some consequences behind what we do. The Bible says faith without works is dead. Once you, once you have that, you need to put it into action. You know that you have, God has anointed you. You know that you have the authority to do what you need to do. Just be obedient and do it. 
And obedience is not easy. Obedience sometimes got to be worked in us because we were born as disobedient people. We don't, we don't never want to do what's right. Doing what's right to us seems like it's a curse. But we have to know within ourselves that we have a God that even though he is sovereign and he'll help us, he'll take care of us, he'll do for us, in spite of, we still got to be obedient to him. So Saul finally came down and said, okay, I did it. Sometimes we need to come down and say, okay, Lord, I did wrong. And I'm asking your forgiveness. And sometimes when your leaders approach you, don't be lifted up as saying, oh, no, I didn't do that. Oh, I didn't know what I was doing. Admit you're wrong. Because when you admit it, you know, drug, the, the drug and alcohol places, they say you got to at least admit that you're a drug addict and an alcoholic. So even after them acting crazy, doing all that, they still got to come back and admit if they want help. Same thing with us as God's people. You know you're crazy. You know you're disobedient. You know you don't want to do what God tells you to do. You know you want to be rebellious all the time. You know you don't want to come to church. You don't want to do nothing God say do. But you got to, at some point in time, you got to be obedient. I was talking to uh, uh, one of my friends uh, uh, yesterday. Young girl, young girl. She got about four kids, four little kids. And, you know, sometimes I, I'm, I'm a little, you know, kind of shy about, you know, just telling, just going and telling people exactly what they need to hear and stuff. Sometimes I kind of, you know, dance around it a little bit. But for some reason, every time I see this girl, it's like, I don't even be planning to talk about Jesus with this girl, but it just comes out. And I, and I, I, I kind of had a conversation with her yesterday, and I told her, I said, listen. You need to just come on in, I told her. If you don't want to come to my church, that's fine. But you need to find somebody church to go to. Find you a church and you need to go and give your life to the Lord. And she was like, well, I know I, I want to do it because it's like everybody, a lot of people just been coming up to me and telling me, oh, my God, everywhere I go, people telling me I need to give, the, give my life to the Lord. I said, the reason why you don't want to do it is because you don't want to be obedient. Because a lot of times we don't want to give up the things that we think is so good. And, and I didn't even have to say that to her. She said that to me. She said, it's just I, most of the time I just feel like what I have is so good. I don't want to get rid of it. I said, well, what's good about it if you're crying about it every day? <laughs> I said, what's good about it if every day you ride into work, you crying from, from home to work and from work to home? What's so good about it? The Lord will give you joy unspeakable, full of glory. I mean, you, you, I'm not going to tell you every day you're going to be on top of the mountain. Sometimes you're going to be down in the valley, but he's going to be right there with you. I mean, everything, everything that we think that is so good for us, God already know that it is no good. Let it go. And we just don't want to be obedient and we don't want to submit to God because we feel that it's so good. It's important for us to be obedient to God. It's important for us to submit to God. And it's important for us to humble ourselves and do the things that God has called us to do. The Bible says faith without works is dead. I can talk faith, but I have to be obedient and put faith into action. So... At this time, if anyone desires prayer, if you feel like you need to be more obedient to God, I should be the first one in the line because I know I need to be more obedient to God. You can come to the front and uh, Pastor Boone will pray for you. Somebody please come so Pastor Boone can pray. <laughs> I wish I could tell everybody that I'm so obedient to God, but I just thank God for his grace and his mercy. 